In this video, I'm going to be showing you Screenshot to Code, which is a new open source project that leverages the GPT-4 Vision API to send in a screenshot or a photo of something that you'd like to create, and it will generate the HTML and Tailwind classes for whatever you're looking to create. So I'll just show you the short demonstration that they have here on the GitHub repository. And as you see here, it will start to render out all that HTML for you as the response begins to come back from the OpenAI endpoint. So to get this all set up, you will need Python installed. So I'd imagine most people likely watching the channel already have this installed, but if you don't, or you're getting errors, this is the place to potentially start out looking. If you know you have Python all installed and set up, the other thing that you're going to have to install is this poetry library for this to work. So once you have those all installed, what you can do is you can go ahead and pull down the repo and there's a very straightforward getting started. So the way that it's set up, you have both your back end and your front end within the repository but they are separated. So you'll first have to go in, grab your API key from OpenAI. So I'm just gonna close a couple tabs here. So you can just go to platform.openai.com slash API keys, create a new API key. And then when you go and run these commands, just make sure that the SK, your key here is within this line. Also make sure that you're within the backend directory. So, Assuming you have poetry installed, you can then go ahead and run the server here. So then the other thing to note is since they are separated between the back end and the front end, I'll just show you what I do within my VS code. So here I have two terminals that are split side by side. So I have my back end on the left hand side here. And then I have, or, or rather, I have my front end on the left hand side here, and then I have my back end on the right hand side here. So this just allows me to have them both within the terminal. You can toggle back and forth here. And then to split them, you can just click on the terminal and click split terminal. So uh, once you're all installed and everything, you can go ahead and make sure they're running. So the poetry run command, and then also the yarn dev command to get the front end started. And once you have it all loaded up, you can go to localhost and you can see um, the screenshot to code front end interface here. So the one thing to note is I just wanted to touch on this before I forget. So in terms of cost of usage, now when you saw that initial demonstration here, you see the sort of animation of it going back and forth and it looks like, okay, this could be doing a lot. Now the output for the Wikipedia page here that I tested on, this was 12 cents. So just to give you an idea in terms of how much this costs, um, you can also go back and make iterations to this to generate this page. This was one shot. So I didn't send in subsequent prompts or anything like that. This was one go, 12 cents is what this cost. So just to sort of give you a, a general sense. So I'll just close out a couple other tabs here. Now, one thing I wanted to touch on for all users, so I'm using a Mac, but if you're using Windows or Linux or what have you, here are the different commands that I found useful to take a screenshot and have it within my clipboard. So I assume most people know how to take a screenshot, um, but you might have it saved to a particular directory and then you have to go and find the file, etc. What I found useful with this is on Mac, so if I just demonstrate it here, if I just command shift four, then I have this little cursor that pops up that you see on my screen here. I'll just move it to the left-hand side here. And then what you do is if you hold control while you're actually going and stretching over what you want to take a screenshot of, so I'll just demonstrate with that text there, that will actually take that and copy it to the clipboard. So it's sort of convenient if you just want to say, you know, you see like a button or I don't know, like an input that you like, like let's say we like this uh, chat GPT um, interface here. So if I just pull that up and then if I just hold control, and let's say I just want this input bar here, I can go ahead and take a screenshot of that. So the Wikipedia page is what I showed you before there. So I just simply drag that across the screen. And then once it was in my clipboard, it pasted in. 
So this is what it actually went ahead and generated. This is the raw HTML file. So everything is within one file for this initial repository. So it's you're going to be able to generate everything within that uh, index HTML, but say if you're, you want to make a React component or whatever, you'll have to go in and either tweak this library itself and generate those things. Now, the one thing that you're going to lose or have to do a fair bit of work to uh, set up something like React is you're, you're going to have to plug in a compiler and whatnot to actually have it render. So I think that's why you see a lot of these plain HTML uh, demonstrations because it's really really quick to show the the demonstration of what's loading uh, without having to compile things like as things are streaming back and whatnot so if i just go to uh, refresh the page here now from the other example i had my uh, input from chat gpt so if i just go ahead and on mac i'm going to paste it in so just command v here i have just the input box so that's the other thing with this is even though in the demonstrations and some of the examples it showed these larger web pages you can also have smaller examples here so i just put in that little one uh, and it's sort of breaking out so you can also instruct it a little bit further and say the icons are breaking out of the input bar and then if we actually look at the code here can see okay we're using a font awesome let's just send that in so you can also send in the screenshot again so for subsequent requests i believe what it's doing is it's just sending in this within the context window but if you want to also so it does a really terrible job and you just want to say hey try try again you can uh, go ahead and toggle this on but in examples like this if i just go ahead and try this let's just see how this does and now we see so it's within that box so even though if it's not perfectly correct you can sort of iterate from there so it's sort of similar to Vercel's new uh, product that's I think it's still under beta so I think it's a VO where you can generate these components on the fly with natural language so Pretty neat stuff. I expect a lot of these types of projects to start to come out over the coming weeks and months, especially with GPT-4 Vision now publicly accessible. But that's it for this video. I just wanted to give you a quick demonstration of this screenshot to code project. Pretty neat. I encourage you to go to the repo, start the repo, shout out to all the contributors here. Excellent work. And that's it for this one. So if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.